Welcome back into the Tell Me Short Series. And today I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question about conversion. I want to ask a question about how so many people are just absolutely confused about their salvation. About how they have confidence or the lack of confidence. So here's my question to you. Who has the right to complain? Listen, so many complain about their lack of confidence in God. However, have you ever thought about God's confidence in us? Who has the right to complain? In 1 John chapter 5, in 1 John chapter 5, we read verses 10 to 15, and I want you to see this because we want to title this today, Clearing Up Conversion Confusion. Clearing Up Conversion Confusion. In 1 John chapter 5, look what it says starting in verse 10 down to verse 15. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And the testimony is this that God has given us eternal life and this life is is his is in his son he who has the son has the life and he who does not have the son of God does not have the life these things i have written to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life this is the confidence which we have before him if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. So what we have here is a very clear declaration about who believes and who doesn't believe. The one believe has confidence in God. The one who doesn't believe does not have confidence in God. So let's clear up the conversion confusion. Listen, God gave us, God gave us the Word of God. God gave us the Bible so that we can know Him and live in a way that pleases Him. God gave us, listen, He gave us the Word of God. Gave us His voice, His will, His purpose, His determination. He gave it to us so that we would know Him absolutely with great clarity. He desires that we truly understand his teachings and not only that, but how to apply those teachings to our life. God's not playing a game of riddles with us. Simply put, the Lord wants us to trust in him with complete confidence. Again, so many complain about their lack of confidence in God. However, have you ever thought about... Okay, I thought about God's confidence in us. So here's the question. Who has the right to complain? Listen, we need to determine and we need to be very clear that we have an enemy. We have an enemy, however, who attempts to undermine the confidence at every turn. He's going to do everything he can to undermine that confidence that we have in God in every single turn, at every moment that he has the opportunity to do so. We've all been there, joyfully moving along through life and sure of our salvation. And then, bam, we stumble into sin and our feelings take over. The devil uses our remorse and conflicting emotions to eat away at our confidence. And then we think, there's no way that I can be saved absolutely no way. Look what I just did. If I were truly saved, I would have never done such a thing. No. So that means I must not be saved because I don't feel saved. Overwhelmed by feelings of regret and shame, we find our faith coming under fire. It's amazing how effectively our fleeting emotions can undermine assurance in God's promises. 
but we shouldn't really be surprised by that at all. After all, we've been conditioned to let our feelings lead us through life, right? If it feels good, do it. That was a popular saying way back in the 1960s. Now I'm dating myself. It's still an all too common idea today. If it feels good, just do it. The problem is that you and I, we, we've become so accustomed to moving by our feelings. And yet the Lord does not speak in feelings. That's pretty amazing as I read through the scriptures. He doesn't speak in terms of feelings. He speaks, listen to this very carefully, he speaks in truth. He doesn't speak in feelings. He speaks in truth. Whenever your emotions contradict the Bible, you can be sure the scriptures are reliable and your emotions are not. For a believer, feeling saved is as irrelevant, listen to me, for a believer feeling saved is as irrelevant of a husband, okay, irrelevant as a husband or a wife feeling married. You either are or you're not. Feelings simply do not make it so. Do you understand what I just said? So here's the question. Have your feelings or regret stolen your confidence in eternal salvation? You need to lay them before the Lord today and embrace that certainty that comes only, only in His truth.